All right, here's how you remove a stator from an Evinrude. These four screws right here. And then here's the timer or trigger. And that'll lift out once you get these screws out and take the stator and lay it to the side. Here's what the trigger looks like, time, timer looks like. Take this off. Connect this wire right here. And this wire right here. To get the timer off, there's four flathead screws that hold it down. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. And it should lift off, but make sure you disconnect the big plugs. That one and that one. I just laid the stator off to the side because I don't need to mess with that. That's a brand new CDI stator. I got to clean the grease out of here. You got to clean the grease out of here and all the dirt and crud because it's sticking. It's not rotating freely. So once you get that off, clean it out. Lay it on the bench, whatever, clean it out, get all the old grease off. And then put a light coat of oil on the ring so it rotates good. You can see all the crud in here. Old grease, probably goo from the old stator, dirt. That's why it wasn't rotating freely. And it sits in this ring it rotates and there's just gunk all in there i'm going to clean it all out and put a little bit of two-stroke oil so it rotates you can see all the gunk all that crap is why it wouldn't rotate good so yeah clean that out and on these screws that hold the i'll show you in a minute but on these screws that hold the ring down Sometimes they rub against, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but sometimes they rub against the body right here, and you got to pry them off a little bit so that they're farther away from the base so they don't rub. That can often make it stick. But yeah, clean it up real good. So it rotates freely. On the ring it rides on, you also want to check and make sure that it's not uh, melted or damaged in any way. This one looks good. It's just dirty. I'm going to clean it up. But make sure it's not melted along the edges or anything. That'll also... you got to get a new one if, that's, if it's damaged in any way like that. But this one looks good. I'm just going to clean it up and oil it up a little bit. You also want to check the ball and socket, the plastic ball and socket, to make sure it's not damaged. This one's a little worn, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I already replaced the other one on the timing tree, but here's the part number for this motor. Of course, look up your part for your motor, but uh, this one's a little bit stretched right here. It's a little bit, well, it's a little bit worn. Let's go ahead and replace it. Yeah, it goes right in there. Those are a pain to get in and get out. You gotta twist them in and twist them out, but just be careful, don't break it. You might want to get two in case because if that breaks, you gotta get a whole nother one. So you might as well order two so you have an extra. When you put these screws back in here, make sure you get in here with some rubbing alcohol or some type of solvent. And run it down in the hole and put some blue Loctite on the, the threads of the, the uh, put some blue Loctite don't use red you'll never get it off the, just use blue Loctite and clean the, the screws up and uh, run it down in here And then back it out, and then run 
the dry side in there and then blow it out with compressed air and uh, you don't want those screws to vibrate out so use blue Loctite okay this is how you reinstall stator on a V4 or V6 Evinrude might be for other models too I don't know but make sure you put blue Loctite on the threads right here on the stator bolts so they don't come out and contact the flywheel if they get loose and torque them to 120 to 144 inch pounds not foot pounds come over here and make sure nothing is going to chafe no wires are going to chafe on the timer and make sure that these rings before you put the stator back on make sure that these rings put firm pressure down on the plastic ring but do not the lips of them cannot contact the timer the timer or else it'll wear it and it'll stick and you'll have a mess but yeah make sure these are all good check all four of them that's the three right there and then there's that one back down in there you can't see unless the stator's off uh, make sure you put a little grease on this ball right here the socket and make sure the timer trigger whatever it's called moves freely and doesn't get stuck at all I mean I've already done this but it's good and then make sure you get all four bolts in and when you put a flywheel back on make sure that the keys in its place right there you can see it and make sure when you put the flywheel on torque it to 140 to 145 foot pounds it has to be torqued down don't use an impact don't just guess it has to be torqued down or else it can shear the flywheel key I can't stress that enough it has to be torqued down 140 to 145 foot pounds and then once you do that make sure everything's good and check your wires make sure nothing can contact the flywheel you should be good when you put these plugs back together make sure that you put a little bit of dielectric grease on the pins when you put it back together all the all the plugs so that it don't get any corrosion in it on that side and then in here and make sure they're clipped down so they don't contact the flywheel especially these little ones I'm gonna zip tie it up here so it's nice and secure but okay when you're reinstalling the flywheel check and make sure that none of the magnets are cracked make sure that the magnets are all good the epoxy is good clean it all up with some I'll just rub it alcohol but get all the grit and crap out of here and uh, make sure all these magnets are good and when you put the flywheel back down on the motor make sure everything is good and everything lines up and everything's smooth and nothing's rubbing before you torque it down nothing's rubbing on the stator before you tor torque it down and clean the taper out um, but yeah I'll show you the tool I made to hold the flywheel okay so here's the bracket I made so I could torque the flywheel nut it's just two pieces of actually it's bed frame but two pieces of angle iron with holes drilled 5 16 holes drilled in it and then 5 16 um, hole drilled here with the bolt all grade 8 these are grade 8 5 16 fine thread these two are because they have to be to screw into the flywheel it might be different for your motor if it's not the same this is a 86 Evinrude 150 and then I just welded this bar 
on it so I can get some extra leverage on there. And then the socket, you see, goes straight down in there and it doesn't rub on anything. Well, when it's straight in there. But yeah, I gotta get a helper to help hold it so I can torque it. I already got it to like 140, but I just wanna double check. And you see, torque wrench goes on here. Someone holds that. Torque wrench, well, someone else holding it. It would go on like that. And the torque spec for this is 140 to 145 foot, foot pounds. When you put the flywheel down on here, make sure the key lines up and look down and the key slot is there, but you can't see it now because it's covered by the nut, but make sure it's all lined up and in its spot. I mean, it won't go down all the way unless it is, but make sure it's in its spot and then torque your nut and you should be good to go. So yeah, that's my bracket right there. I mean, you could just, you could weld that right there, but I just put a, a bolt in there because I have other outboards that might fit in the future if I need to take a flywheel off. But yeah, make sure you get grade eight bolts. Those are inch long grade eight bolts. <clears throat> and tighten those down, make sure that everything's snug, but don't get them too tight. You don't want to rip the threads out. That would not be good. Yeah, here's my flywheel torquing apparatus. <laughs>